For project two, you need to purchase a Hardy Backer 500 cement board. You see the label pictured here. This may not be exactly what the current label is, but it will be something similar. This is a cement board on which you can weld. They come in a three foot by five foot size and you need half of the board. So many of you have already coordinated with a partner to get the board. If you haven't yet and you need some help, please reach out to me via email. These can be found in Home Depot on Route 66. If you go into the store and turn right, go as far to the right end of the store as you can and then all the way to the back corner, they're laying flat on the floor. Make sure that you double check the label. Do not rely on asking the folks that work at Home Depot as most of them will direct you to the wrong thing. If you get your board at a time when the studio isn't open, you can park right in front here for 15 minutes. Come in the gate, it's always open. And you can just leave your material right along this fence. Make sure you write your name on it in Sharpie so somebody else doesn't help themselves. To cut your board down to size, you are going to need a circular saw, our second power tool here in Sculpture One. It lives in the tan cabinet that's right next to where you get your hammers and bolt cutters. Uh, it's also in the same cabinet with the drills, except we see it's on a lower down shelf. There are several circular saws here. You are looking for the circular saw that has a specific blade in it. So if you can see here, you see the blade says Hardy Blade, the same brand that makes the board that you purchased. This is the type of circular saw that you want to get. You do not want to get a circular saw with a regular uh, wood cutting blade because it's not going to work very well for cutting our board. For cutting your boards, you will need a tape measure and you're also going to need this funny thing right here which is the chalk line. We're going to do the cutting of our cement boards outside. It's very important that you have your safety glasses on for this. Brian Painter, our other sculpture teacher, is going to help us demonstrate cutting the board. So you see he drops it onto this piece of foam. The piece of foam would normally be sitting outside the sculpture studio, but if you need it at a time when I'm not there, it's just inside the gate to the right behind the bottles of acetylene. The first thing you will do will be to measure out 30 inches, which is half the size of your 5 foot or 60 inch board. So hook the tape measure on the end of the board and then find the 30 inch mark. And make a line here. You'll move over to the other side. Hook it on the other end. Find 30 inches here and make a mark. Brian is going to get set up to cut. So again, he measures 30 inches on one side and 30 inches on the other. We always measure twice. I'm sure you've heard the old adage, measure twice, cut once, but this is how we get a straight line. Then he's going to use the chalk line. So you'll see him hook one edge of this chalk line next to one of his ticks and then he pulls it across, lines up with the other tick, and then just snaps it right on the board and it leaves a nice straight line without you having to put a ruler in between the marks. When you are done with the chalk line, wind it back up. To get started sawing, you need to line the saw up on your line. This blade actually needs to be aligned with your chalk mark. Fortunately for us, there is a help on the saw if you look at the front, there is a little notch right here. If you follow along with that notch, the blade will be more or less on the chalk line. So as you're doing this, you're going to be standing over the piece and you're going to be watching to make sure that notch goes along the line. Ideally, you'll cut a perfectly straight line, but we're not using a straight rule or anything, so you're just going to get as close as possible and that will be perfectly serviceable for this particular uh, assignment. So to hold the saw, you're going to have your left hand on this knob here and your right hand here on the trigger. When you pull the trigger, it's going to make a pretty loud noise. It's likely going to startle you. So much like the drill, you're going to start slow and just pull the trigger slowly with the blade just off of the material. So you can see it's just off the edge of the material here. So you'll start that saw. 
and then just move it gradually through the material. We're going to watch Brian Painter demonstrate this. Brian will move the saw over to the material. He's going to check the depth of the blade to make sure it only goes through the cement board and not through the foam as well. Gets the cord out of the way so as not to cut it. Puts the blade just off the material and aligns the chalk line with the right notch. Starts the saw, starts moving through. Notice how he's keeping the table or the, the black platform of the saw flat on the cement board. He adjusts his position if needed all the way through the material and then once he's cut, sets the saw back down when the blade is stopped. You are going to be careful as you move the saw through the material that you don't have anything in its path. So exa for example, you may be standing on the foam to get good leverage, but you never want to put your foot or anything else in the path of the saw for hopefully obvious reasons. I assume that you like your foot attached to your body. I like mine that way, and so let's keep them that way. When it is your turn to saw, please call me outside so that I can help you out with this. This is one tool that it is a little bit dangerous. Uh, it's safe if used correctly, but I just want to make sure this first time that you do use it correctly.